Welcome to the January 30th, 2023 uh, study session of the City Council, Stewart City Council. This time I'll call this meeting to order. Uh, and we just have one item on our study session agenda tonight. I'm very excited to hear from Mr. Brady Moore about a presentation of data gathered by staff and the parking committee uh, for guidance on public parking areas. Yep. So here's Brady. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, uh, Council. Um, Brady Moore on behalf of the City Manager's Office. I'm excited to present to you the parking committee findings um, from the parking committee that um, you as council approved on August 15th um, last year. Up here I have a quote that I actually pulled from our core commercial district's master plan. Uh, commonly it's referred to as our 2005 Puma plan, um, but I thought it was so true so I wanted to read it to start the presentation. It's been said that parking is not rocket, sci rocket science, it's harder. Parking is a specialized area of expertise that impacts people in very different ways, direct ways. It is political, it generates passion, it can generate controversy, it is expensive, it impacts economic development. Because of our dependence on the automobile, it's a critical piece of our civic infrastructure, one that must be effectively planned, managed, and maintained like any other infrastructure resource. So, on that note, uh, on an overview of kind of what we're going to do um, this evening um, for our study session, I want to walk you through the parking committee process that we did as a, a committee meeting, um, some of the findings um, that we determined through those discussions, um, as well as I'm going to invite a few of the stakeholders from each district um, groups to come speak to you briefly, and then I will come back up and answer questions and get your guidance um, for the, kind of the next steps as we move forward. Um, so for those uh, listening that may not know what we mean when we say core commercial districts, um, the, in the area of study for this committee, this parking committee was specifically the areas of downtown, um, those areas south of 6th Street. I know we consider areas north of 6th Street also downtown, but for this focus, we focus south of 6th. Um, for Campus Corner and the Strip, we kind of combined into um, a, a common group to study the areas, the core districts around campus. Uh, again, corp Campus Corner is kind of that McKnight Center moving east and around Campus Corner. That's Knobloch around Eskimo Joe's and even as far down as like Matthews Street next to Gallagher Iba. Um, the Strip, of course, Washington Street that we all know well, um, the University is 6th Street um, specific area and the surrounding blocks. Um, the role of this committee, um, th again, this was commissioned by you on, on uh, August 15th last year. We opened up the sign up um, on our, our website um, for two weeks and everyone who signed up was invited to participate in the committee. Um, we wanted this to be stakeholder-led findings to City Council. Obviously, we all believe in having citizen-led um, action and, and want to hear their voice um, when we make decisions as a city, and so uh, we wanted uh, them to be part of um, this committee. Uh, we wanted uh, the districts to identify the challenges that are specific to their districts and work with us as city leadership and management for the solutions. Um, we held three meetings at the library, and um, we uh, and throughout the process, I encouraged the committee to email observations, concerns. I mean, they're the ones that are living in these districts. Um, as new things came up, they sent emails and ideas for improvement, and I sh shared many of those emails, most of those emails in your packet uh, for this evening. Uh, some of, as we started the first meeting, some of the general disclaimers that I went through with the committee um, is, you know, I just kind of listed them here, but this is uh, that parking, public parking is a dynamic system, and what I mean by that is it's not something you just fit, you set it and you forget it. It constantly needs monitoring and adjustment, um, especially as we have new growth in different areas or new things come on board that are built near campus that are affecting districts. Um, we constantly have to monitor and change things. Uh, so that's why we're here. Any positive change will have a negative change. Um, you know, it, again, as that quote that I started with, public parking is complicated. Um, Something that may be good for one business or one merchant may have a negative effect on the other merchant in their way of business. So uh, that's why I challenge them to understand, you know, what district parking is. You know, when you're part of a district, you're, you have to have a community-minded approach. 
um, you have to think, you know, what is best for the entire system or the entire district. Understanding of right of way, um, you know, that area in between property lines that the city has the ability to uh, design well and function well for the community. So just understanding where we have our lanes that we can be creative and, and do uh, new things. Um, you know, Stillwater is not alone. Many communities are addressing parking issues. In the last couple of weeks, I had conversations with um, professionals in the industry who said they named multiple communities around us in Arkansas, Texas, Kansas, that are dealing with the same issues. Especially in vibrant towns, it's a, it's a great thing to be part of a vibrant town that's dealing with um, parking issues and growth. Um, the goal is compliance, not tickets. You know, what I mean by that is that we strive for healthy turnover in a good public parking system. We want good turnover. Uh, we don't want abuse of the system. That's something that we don't want. Um, and then the last item is free parking is not free. Um, it's, you know, every article, some of the articles I shared with the group uh, says this. It's just there is a high cost uh, to maintaining parking, creating more public parking, and properly managing public parking just takes uh, funding. Uh, the current challenges that I, that I presented to you in August as we were starting to establish this um, committee were the things that I had heard from people in these districts, um, some of the vendors in this di these districts, and they were asking for help on. So these initial things I presented to the committee that we need to look at possibly adjustments to time parking, new on-street parking, uh, maybe paid parking options with modern through a modern management system that we'll look at in a little bit. Um, new structured parking, parking garage options, um, employee designated areas, areas designated for commercial vehicles and current residents. Those are especially important in the downtown areas um, where we need some help in those on those items. And then we talked about the public realm design again that right away that area that we as a city have the ability if we it, with proper funding to creatively improve our public realms, whether it's wider sidewalks, changing the way we do parking and loading zones and landscaping. And so uh, one of the things I showed the committee in our first meeting was our, uh, this snapshot from our Sixth Street Corridor um, study. This is as they looked at um, Campus Corner in the Strip as part of their Sixth Street uh, corridor project they looked at the strip and what could we do to improve the strip or what are some options um, and this is the current conditions as we look at the strip and then you can see how it changes with um, again redesigning that right away making it more friendly to pedestrians and visitors making it more um, aesthetically um, pleasing and I know Claudia will maybe comment later she's not a fan of the trees <laughs> and the health of them but uh, sorry for the <laughs> that's right but, but anyway, it does give us a great view of what can occur with revenue, with uh, a new design uh, to the parking uh, or the right of way in this area. Again, here's a, a picture of an up close view of Washington and Fourth. Again, you can see how you can reimagine that space and redesign it. Um, one of the things as I met with the Washington Street merchants, um, they, they strongly desire the ability, it would be great to easily block off uh, the strip from fourth to university uh, for busy weekends, events, game day weekends, um, for safety concerns and just the ability for more people people to safely enjoy uh, the strip area. So all those are things that do tie in to parking. At our first meeting we had um, a breakout session by district so we after we spoke to the entire group we, we divided into two groups um, the campus corner and the strip group and then we also had a downtown group and I we provided these big yellow sticky uh, pads that they could write down anything just a brainstorm session on what what are issues what are things that you see as challenges to parking in your districts and we just laid them all up on the wall and then the next thing we did was we gave them each so many stickers and able to go vote on kind of what are their top priorities um, and, and just a way to kind of get that data and see where things land. And so this is the, the strip campus corner district. I'm not going to walk through everything, but I did want you to see it. It was in your packets. Um, this was for the, the campus corner group and the strip. And um, Steve Spradling, I will mention, he's the director of OSU Parking. He, was in, he wanted to be on this committee. He's been great to work with the city 
on these parking issues in the past. Um, he was not able to attend the first meeting and, and we recognized that, that they were, we needed their help or their involvement in defining solutions because of the impact that students and, and faculty have on that, those districts while school is in session. And Steve saw this when I sent the summary email out and he immediately called and said, I'm gonna be at your next meeting, I'm gonna bring lots of data. And so um, that was really helpful. Our group uh, spent quite a long time talking to him. Um, and so anyway, as we listed out and voted, those are priority votes are where those stickers landed. And then we, from that, tried to say, okay, how do we take all these items and chunk them into like four or five major things that we can address in our next meeting? So when you see the agenda, agenda item column and the agenda items listed out below, that's where they kind of all fell. And I'm gonna go into more detail on those later. Again, this is for the downtown district um, where their votes uh, landed. Um, a lot of it was based on, you know, additional parking, whether that be a centralized parking hub, more lots, um, adjustments to parking, planning for Block 34 um, growth and um, events that are going to occur in the district. Uh, again, we took all those, tried to pile them into um, four items that that could best that we could focus on for our our second meeting at that second meeting we discussed each of those as i mentioned uh, c spradling from osu came and gave us a lot of great information uh, on osu to statistics and and then i took time to to make these maps because i just felt like i needed to grasp how many counts we had for each of those timed areas and so this was helpful for our group to just discuss um, you know Number one, how much parking that we are responsible for as a city to maintain and to monitor. Um, some of the things that surprised me were, um, yeah, one, just how much parking, you know, we didn't study, um, the, wasn't part of the study was like the Greek neighborhood that is just to the west, which, you know, is impacted by public parking. It costs money to maintain and, and it does have an impact, obviously, when the students are in session. Uh, we looked at the different timed areas where we thought adjustments would be, where we thought, you know, some areas that like kind of surprised us why they weren't timed. Um, one of the members of the committee pointed out, I don't know if you can see, the, uh, I don't know if my mouse is coming up, but the three, there's three, where Garage Burger is over there on Elm, there's, there's three spots just to the north of it um, on a, a pretty long section that OSU has some abandoned, they've torn down the homes or whatever, there's just abandoned uh, uh, drive-throughs that we don't have parking but I, I sketched up to scale and we could easily get about 20 spaces in the right-of-way right there so we could turn those three into about 20 spaces again takes revenue um, to to create that additional right-of-way uh, parking uh, as we looked at downtown and uh, the downtown districts um, obviously, one of the things that we're looking at is Block 34, the impact that we're going to have on the upcoming construction and working with them. We have uh, 148 spots total right now surrounding Block 34. 62 of those are those interior spots that we know we're going to lose um, when the block is reconstructed, which is awesome. We all recognize that Block 34 is going to be a blessing to our community, but those, those lost spots for employee parking will be an impact to the district, and so we need to discover ways to um, find additional parking or make some adjustments to time parking um, to accommodate for that and for events. Um, in both districts, we were able to look at areas where we believe we can add additional right-of-way parking. I mean, more inventory for parking is gonna help each district. We know that. Um, it's just, how do we generate that revenue uh, to add it? We, we're trying to encourage anytime there's new development like StoneCloud, to we added more parking right in front that's been a great thing and as more developments happen south of 9th we're hoping to add more parking um, and, and, and work with uh, the TIF funds to help do some of that um, so jumping into findings uh, for each of the the districts first for the campus corner in the strip um, you know one of the top things that they were looking for is just we need a new parking management system to increase turnover. Um, I applaud our current enforcement. They do a great job with um, the current technology of chalking that we use, um, but um, and it, and it, they, do, they do the best they can. But we know, I mean, I observed it from being a business owner downtown for 16 years. It just, there's people that know how to use that system, unfortunately. Um, 
So they just, they they were asking for us to, to really look at utilizing a, a more modern parking system. Um, two, employee parking. Employee parking is an issue on the strip. They all, a lot of the merchants um, have, or buy parking from the OSU parking garage on 4th. OSU is actually maxed out what they'll allocate. I think they have 74 spots allocated to uh, downtown area um, merchants, or the strip merchants, excuse me, and, and they've maxed those out. And so on game days, or many times, they just encourage their employees to Uber or Lyft into um, the district to be dropped off. And that, that brings up one of the other things, that third item is just loading and unloading zones on the strip. Um, the issues with um, trash even, I know that they've invited, which I love, these conversations have um, helped get our waste man management director, uh, Matt Faulkner, involved with them, and they're looking for solutions on trash. But all that ties into parking. I know um, even like as we go into number four, or before I go into number four, Uber and Lyft zones, you know, you see a lot of times in vibrant communities that, that have uh, a lot of bars or a lot of areas where people need to be picked up, having that designated area, having proper wayfinding, which ties into number four. Um, one thing I thought that was interesting is when we did that brainstorming session is how much in both districts they talked about, we want new wayfinding. We want better lighting, safety lighting for our employees. Uh, we, you know, this that desire for better sidewalks, um, maintaining, uh, you know, maybe new landscaping. Again, all things that require um, revenue in a proper system uh, to, to encourage and to maintain. The findings for downtown, um, you know, one and two are kind of interchangeable. Um, as I looked at that even today, going through this, I, I think one and two are kind of both one. Um, looking for more par public parking, especially with, um, you know, maybe the options of a garage, again, the expense of a garage. Um, as, you'll, as we looked back at our Puma plan that recommended a garage over Bank First in 2005, it was average $12,000 a spot or $13,000 a spot. In 2022, at the beginning, kind of before the crazy inflation, it was 26,000 a spot. So it's doubled in that time to do a, a parking garage. Um, looking for ways to do on street um, and increasing inventory, basically looking at ways that we can better manage our lots um, and then time parking adjustments. Again, block 34 events, uh, allocations on time, making those adjustments, finding areas where we can do commercial. We have commercial vans and commercial uh, trucks parked throughout our district on public parking um, for free. We have residents that uh, would like to have a designated area, even if it means some walking distance. And um, all those things need kind of a new management system in order to to incorporate number three uh yeah just a new parking management system to increase turnover this was a lower priority on the downtown group than the campus corner university group um, for public realm improvements uh, again same thing i mentioned a second ago wayfinding signage um, <coughs> lighting those things that um, that we would all love to see improved in our our different districts Okay, so if we try to take those four things from each district and kind of just summarize them into like, okay, what, what, are the, what is the main um, things that we're trying to drill down to? What, what can we do as a city um, to address these things? I think we just need to look for a better management system for public parking. Um, increasing that parking spot turnover, right? That healthy turnover that districts need in order to have cu a, um, a parking available for customers. Um, use, utilizing modern technology. Um, eliminate abuse of the current parking system. I've already gone into that. Number two, revenue to create new parking, like in the right of way, uh, maintain and manage public parking. You know, of all those things, the, the wayfinding, the lighting, the new parking that we'd love to see, um, better management, all those things require funding. And so that's, that's a, a real challenge that we're up against as a city. And I just wanted to talk real quick about um, what a, like I keep mentioning like a modern or more efficient management system, you know, the, this is um, goes back to something I shared in August. I was able to go to Lawrence, Kansas in October of 2021 and visit spend a day with them looking at the new management system that they had just implemented 
Um, we got to ride around in the cars and see the license plate recognition technology go. It was, it was honestly just amazing to see how fast we could go and safely go and see it, it just read every license plate, no matter what state they were from, and could determine if, you know, through lifetime parking database, um, if that per person had um, was supposed to be parking in there, whether it's through a permit, whether it's through checked in on an app. Um, it was just really neat to see how they use, utilize that data and that technology to make sure parking is available, that you have that healthy turnover um, in districts. Um, the, the modern system uh, allows for parking zones, permits, designated areas. I mean, if we look at doing a, maybe a parking district in areas in the future um, and, ha and selling permits or using, uh, having permits available for those commercial vehicles that are utilizing free public parking for their business, you know, this, this system would allow for us to um, set those, uh, those zones and adjust the rules. And what I mean by that is, um, you know, you can look at the data and say, how often do we want turnover and how much availability do we need? And so you manage that. And so people can check in and, and for a couple hours in a district, but they can't come back for so many hours to that district. And you can just, you learn to learn how to, to, uh, create that healthy turnover again. Um, it, it, obviously, a modern system can allow you to have revenue to support parking infrastructure, right? Create, you know, capture that revenue. One of the big things that we've seen in cities like Oklahoma City recently, uh, in Lawrence, Kansas, that I observed firsthand, and, and is that when you do implement a new system like this and you have revenue, a significant amount of revenue coming in, is that you dedicate a large portion of that revenue going back into those districts to create the, the right of way to create those things that we want, those public realm improvements that we want to see um, and, and make it those, our districts continue to be a destination district that you want to be. I mean, the, I, I, I believe Stillwaters has incredible districts with downtown, the Strip, and Campus Corner. And I think people want to come to those districts. And I think they, as they have parking available and have some of these nice amenities that we see in other cities, I think that's going to only increase and rise the tide of those businesses. Um, next step, so we want to hear your guidance before we, in our discussion tonight, um, as I, as we as staff try to just think, okay, what are next steps? This is a, this is a big complex problem, right? It, it is truly like kind of rocket science and it has a negative effect on different applications that you install. Um, I feel like that the Campus Corner group and the Strip group are, are I don't want to use the word begging, they're, they're strongly asking for us to look at a way to implement a modern parking system. Um, they're ready for it. Um, they want to see this new technology, this new implementation in place. Um, there is a long process to this and we would need somewhat of a, not a long process, but we need uh, professional service, like someone that is an expert in this field to come in and say, this is how you do it. I believe, and I, I know a lot of us do, in incremental change, right? We don't need to do a blanket approach that has a, a negative impact on the entire community. Let's take some targeted areas and let's start implementing it and let's measure those results and make changes as we need to. Um, we also will need to look at revision of code, parking operations. One thing that they, uh, multiple communities that have implemented these new systems is they've decriminalized um, uh, time parking, right? Um, it just, there's benefits to that. It can uh, help in your relationship with the community. It, to a little forgiveness, you will occasionally make some mistakes and help with some of those validations. And then when unpaid tickets are not paid, those could move through the municipal system. So there's a lot of things that we need to look at and get good expert eyes on. Um, again, that dedicated revenue that we would um, set aside for those districts let their, their groups that oversee their districts um, plan on how they want that, that money to be implemented, whether it's through new parking, man, maintaining parking, uh, sorry, man, maintaining the, the damage. One email you saw was a significant damage to some of the parking and people were tripping. And so this would give us those funds to uh, help us bring some of the amenities to this, these districts. Downtown, it really is, I, I, we feel that it is a um, just needed adjustment to some of these time areas to accommodate for Block 34. Um, we need to look at 
general improvements um, to support some of the new development. Again, that's kind of creating that, those additional parking spots in the right of way. And examine lots, look for new lots or examine our current lots and see how we can designate those areas for some of those commercial vehicles, perhaps selling permits to them. Um, you know, I thought it was interesting as I began the, this presentation with that quote from the Puma plan, um, as I was reading through it again this week, I noticed this, that in 2005, it recommended for the parking districts of the campus commercial districts, the stakeholders and merchants in the Washington Street, again, this is from 2005, Strip and Knobloch Street campus corner areas were very supportive of implementing paid on-street parking in their districts to promote on-street parking space turnover. So again, exactly what we're talking about in 2005 is still true today. And again, and then what they said for downtown, this is again from our 2005 master plan. <clears throat> the downtown group uh, would like to have a new parking management system. It's recommended to be administered by the city of Stillwater for all the core districts. In downtown, this new parking management program would aim to meet the following objectives. Improve the ease and ability and availability of parking for customers, employees, and visitors, and to create new parking supply to encourage the growth of downtown and encourage new investment that attracts jobs, residents, customers, and visitors. Um, so uh, I just want to again thank uh, so much the members of this parking committee. Um, throughout the process, they communicated well. Some came here to meet, some came, uh, gave us phone calls, a lot sent emails, just giving their ideas and their feedback into how they can improve um, Stillwater's public parking. So I want to thank each one of them. I know they all couldn't be here tonight with the weather. Um, and then now I'm going to invite up um, four of the members to just quickly speak uh, on behalf of their district and some of their um, things that they want to emphasize. Uh, first will be Dustin McDonald from Chris's University Spirit on uh, Campus Corner and then Claudia Humphreys um, with uh, Coney Island on the strip. We'll then have uh, Katie Bean from uh, ProValueNet and Scott Jones from Simmons Bank. And then I'll come back and answer any questions you have. Thank you, Council, for. Uh sitting here and listening to this uh, committee tonight. Um, Dustin McDonald, owner of Chris's University Spirit on Campus Corner. Uh, been part of Campus Corner since 1998, so 25 years um, in that area. And to not reinstate what Brady said, but, but parking comes at an extreme cost. Um, it is not free. Um, I see it every day from my front doors of students abusing parking in front of our businesses each and every day, Monday through Friday, um, getting out of their cars with their backpacks, walking to campus, and taking up customer parking. Um, for many, many years, we had a dedicated parking lot that UHBC uh, would rent to the merchants of Campus Corner um, that we all paid for our employees to park. We no longer have that. And now we have the School of Music that is there on campus, off campus, that um, students literally take that entire parking lot every day at no cost. Um, we as merchants paid for those spots to the church and we no longer have those spots and those students park there for free, um, leaving our employees with nothing. So um, like I said, parking, comes at a, at a very high cost. Um, there are challenges to parking, but I think the days of chalking tires is um, a little antiquated, and we need to look at more of an app-based system um, that is valuable for all the citizens. Um, I, I truly think that if you go to a district, you're going there for a reason, and you are willing to pay something to go to that district. Um, people do it in Tulsa, people do it in Oklahoma City, people do it all across the United States to various areas that they want to go visit, eat, shop um, for a short period of time and pay a small price to do that, to guarantee themselves parking in that area. Um, there are many times that uh, 
uh, we may want to eat on the strip and we have to circle four or five times and end up leaving because there's no parking. Um, also, for the employee's sake, you know, I think there needs to be design systems uh, that are safe for employees that you can get your employees to and from work that, you know, that are nicely lit. Um, I know Claudia's talked about this for her employees, but if your employees are having to walk two to three blocks to work every day, um, that, that's, a, that's an important thing that, that they have safety. But um, I think it's a major, major issue that, that this town faces, and um, I think it's something that we need to look at and, and kind of revitalize and, and, and update um, and make it better for all the citizens. So, but I appreciate your time listening to this. Thank you. Thanks, Dustin. Hey, Dustin, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Um, I mean, where, where do employees of the Strip or uh, Campus Corner Park, I mean, yours or others? I think the hideaway has a lot right behind their building, correct? They have a lot that they have recently painted to have a few employees okay. I and mean, it's not all their employees um i have made an agreement with another uh person in the area that we pay 250 bucks a month for our for our staff for six spots um so it, it's you know it's a free-for-all it's so. just you guys uh, all have just try to find we just some option or your employees just park in Yep, and we and we had those guaranteed options with with the church for for many many years. I mean, I estimated we probably paid thirty to forty thousand dollars as a whole of Campus Corner for our employees to park in that lot, um, and it was well maintained, well managed. Um, but now now it's a free for all, so it it's wherever you can park. It's you know walk park two blocks away, um, walk in the rain. So, how many overall spots do you think are would be needed for for employees, employees. When you said for, for our district alone probably 75 i would think you know you've got i mean there's several retailers on campus corner between all of us combined so and not you know not everybody's going to get guaranteed a spot so i mean that that's just the the premium of parking so Thank you. Yep. You, Appreciate I'm it. sorry, you said the church parking lot is now just a free for all and they don't know nothing's monitored and students just park it for free? Park for free. Yep. No longer monitored. There's signs there that say you need a permit, but they've students are smart. They've they've they figured it out really quick. So they're not charging you for permits still, are they? No. Okay. They stopped pre COVID. I mean right after COVID. So any other questions? Thank you. Thanks. Claudia Humphreys, uh, owner of Coney Island on uh, the Strip. Um, nice to see you guys out. I know it's not the most pleasant of environments, so <laughs> thank you for coming in. Um, I would say that one of the problems that we have on, on the Strip is we have several parking complexes around us and it to, they have to buy parking permits additional to their rent and so it's cheaper for them to park around th four o'clock and if the if our monitors not monitoring that day they come sooner than that but they'll park right around 4 4 15 again students are very smart <laughs> and they don't come get their cars again until nine and they'll just move them so the whole night time from four o'clock on those cars are just parked all night long and they never leave and so uh, you know we're trying to get i hear all the time why do you not go to the strip and they said well, we can't find anywhere to park we're losing so much revenue on the strip between um, commercial um, retail districts and restaurants and bars because people can't park literally that's their number one reason is we can't i don't like driving around looking for a parking place I bought a parking lot and we put nine pe uh, people in there and we kept it full. And, and it's just, and it has Park Mobile in it. And it, when we quit monitoring it closely, it's, but it still stayed full. And then it's all people going to Fuzzies and, and Coney's and, you know, close by Pickleman's and all that because they can't park. The other issue that I have is there's a lot of uh, late night um, businesses along the strip. And you have young men and women that are bartending until three o'clock in the morning and they're parked a long ways off and they have to walk by themselves 
at that time of night and it's not lit up. Now some of them will get, friends got a parking place that's close enough, they'll walk down and then they'll ride with their friend, but if that doesn't happen, then they're just walking by themselves at night. And so we have nowhere to park our, our employees. And so we tried to rent from the university. They don't have places. I asked them, please, when it comes open this year, will you call me? I need about 10, just so that everybody that's on staff and we can rotate back and forth. But we can't even get the parking places. Our, our staff was using my parking lot because they have nowhere to go. And I just, it, I'm not secure with those kids walking around at night at 3 o'clock in the morning. And people think they're bartending and they have money on them, you know, that's just... But the reality is, it's, it's a major issue. And it's, it's a major issue for even the retail stores because they can't get people to come in because nobody wants to deal with it. Paid parking, it's gonna be a challenge on the strip because you're gonna have to make it expensive enough that the students aren't willing to take the hit, but not too expensive to harm the retailers. So there's, there is going to be, and we know that, I mean, the committee was very well aware of this, there's just gonna be this juggle and that's why uh, Brady is saying we need to bring someone in to help us figure this out but they're gonna just park and just walk in the fraternity houses if they don't have enough spaces those kids are over here I mean it's I love the college kids they're great but they need the parking places are a problem there's only about 50 on the strip so and then all the uber drivers and the doordash drivers and all that stuff are taking up people's parking places so it's just, it's not the customers, <laughs> unfortunately. So if you, you have any questions? Um, you were saying that some of the residents of those areas have the have apartment pay complexes. The, new, the newer apartment complexes, they have to pay for additional parking passes to park at their complex and they don't buy them, so they just park on the street. That's yes. good to know. And we've been told that by several people, yes. not just, I mean, I didn't realize that till several people came in. Oh no, it's quite exp it's more expensive to park there in their parking garages than it is to park on OSU. So they're the ones that are buying that Fourth Street Ramsey Street garage. Those college students are buying the spaces up in there that go to the apartments because it's cheaper than buying getting the it's cheaper to park on campus than in those apartments. Yes, that's crazy to hear. That's Keep what we were told. I didn't look into the numbers, but that's what I was told. So, well, I've noticed that those. The on-street parking on Ramsey between those complexes is also untimed. Yes, there's a lot of untimed around there, us. It's just, it's totally full, which I would assume those are just residents in there. And you get over, you go one block to the west of us, all along there, and all of those are untimed. There's no, no, so, you know, if we could get some of that, where those, where they're not, the Greek houses are not using the side streets to park, then my employees might have somewhere that's closer to park. You know, and we as a company, I could deal with some of that. I mean, you know, that's not, mm -hmm. it's just that we don't have options. I think it's really challenging as you get into some of the residential parts of that mm -hmm. because we have so many single family or homes that are housing more than one car, a lot Correct. more than one car. So they probably utilize, residents probably utilize a lot more on street parking. It is a mad dash when a car comes out of a parking lot on the yeah. strip. <laughs> I mean, there's some horn hawking and snarky people if you take their spot, you know, so. <laughs> How much, I mean, are there, have you, I assume you or other folks on the Strip have talked to some of the private lots around there to see what else might be available. Is there anything, I mean, those are all I mainly. I looked around, there's not really anything around us that's, in, that's, that's, vacant okay. everything that's been vacant has been somebody's done something on or is parking on it and you can't you can't rent it there were some things i know that chad was renting some space for a while and someone was it um someone else was renting some space, and just like what happened to dust they, they took the just space away yeah. so we don't really have a lot of options i mean you'd have to go multiple blocks over and i don't know i haven't seen anything around us and i looked around couple of, well about a month ago so everything's got a house on it now some of the houses might not need to be there anymore but you know that's not my job so <laughs> <laughs> so you said you need 10 employee spots at least 10 and just so, for I mean, me given yeah given the number of businesses and, on yeah you know, I mean at least in that and every restaurant there's probably got has 
just the, like Picklemans, they usually have eight to ten people there when I'm counting. They're, you know, just kind of checking it out. And I, I'm sure some of the other bars have even more than that. So your folks just end up going west and parking they, in the neighborhoods? Just, a lot of times I get dropped off and somebody has to come pick them back up at 3 o'clock. Or, you know, I mean, it's, it's just a scramble, to be honest with you. They don't park at the same place every time. They're all over. They can't afford to Uber back and forth. I mean, that's not sensible. So sometimes they can get a parking place. And sometimes they'll come in early in the day and park and then go have somebody come get them and then bring them back. <laughs> I, I mean, they're quite crafty about this. So <laughs> I would assume the in terms of schedules, when employees are coming in and when employees are leaving, are, is there any sort of like um, coordination to that? Are they... Are you seeing all different? The businesses all do it differently. Different. I mean, we have three shifts that we run a day. Um, retailers probably, I don't know what they run, but we run three shifts a day. I'm just thinking like a, a joint employee shuttle. You know, if you guys had an off, if we found an off and I premise don't, spot and yeah, ran like a regular shuttle back and forth of some kind. OSU's talking about releasing some of the paid parking at the bottom of Ramsey Street so that we might be able to rent some of that because they're not getting the revenue off of it. And that's the reason they're not getting the revenue off of it is because the parking is free everywhere else. <laughs> so yeah, we're creating many... a little bit of a problem for just the whole area in the sense that we as a city are allowing everybody just to park wherever they want to for free. And your poor guy can't, I mean, the kids figure out the days he's there and he's not there. I mean, I mean you know by 10 o'clock if he's going to be around. So <laughs> how many time spots does the university have in that garage? Because the first floor of that garage is... 74. Yeah, 74 mm -hmm. Park Mobile. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Those are all Park Mobile. There's 74 spots down there? And they're not... They're not being utilized because there's too much free space around them. Well, but it sounds like the free space is usually full. So I'm it surprised is. that people aren't using it. Maybe they don't know it's there. Well, my employees would have to pay for it for eight hours. Yeah. So when you pay that rate for eight hours, it's a lot of money. So that's why we would have to do it. We can't pay that sure. particular rate for eight hours three times a day. So yeah. that's the one reason why we, we don't use it. Now during homecoming and other games and stuff like that, I rented spots in the parking garage for my employees so that they could have a place to be. Because they, and some, you know, sometimes they end up being late because they can't find anywhere to park. And so nobody likes that. I mean, you know, that's just kind of creates a bad atmosphere also. So, yeah, that's why we don't, my employees don't use that parking space because it's too expensive on an eight-hour time frame. I was going to say, I assume yeah. it does that. Like, if we had this, yeah. we could do it cheap for a, the first hour. Yeah, or and I want to say it it's 20 or, tw 20 or $25 a day to if do the whole 24 hours. But yeah. once you do seven or eight hours, you might as well be paying that amount anyway. Yeah. So, and that's just too much. So that's why it doesn't get, because the college kids are using all those free spaces, they're not going to pay the $25 a day either. They're going to go circle the block and find that free spot in front of my store. <laughs> Is that <Other> enough? <laughs> Thanks, Claudia. Appreciate You're you being here. Uh, Katie Bean, I'm with Pro Value Net downtown. <laughs> it's my life story. Um, I'll, I'll be really brief. I just want to thank the council on behalf of all of downtown and Pro Value Net that we do appreciate and see your concern and consideration of the parking problems that we all face and that you're looking at all the possible solutions. Um, as Mr. Morris pointed out, we do need a better, more modern management system for public parking. Um, as our downtown grows and thrives, it needs to see changes to better accommodate all these changes. And I know we are on board with it. Change hurts, we all know that, but we also understand that it's all for the betterment uh, for the town as a whole. So that's really about it. Thank you. Thank you. I won't be long either, so I'm the last one here. So. <laughs> Mayor, City Council, thanks for the opportunity to be here. 
I want to thank, really thank Brady. He's done the yeoman's work on this. And like he said, I think in his, in his opening slide, it, uh, it's not brain surgery. It's probably harder than brain surgery, uh, considering all the elements that are involved in what, how it affects so many people. Um, I'm, I've been uh, downtown. Well, I've been back in store about 34 years now, and most all that time's been downtown. So I've seen a lot of change over that time. So I guess I'm one of the older people, so I, can, I know about all that change. You know, already on downtown, I don't think parking wasn't near as much of an issue as it is now, even though it was an issue and always has been. But uh, uh, back then, you were more worried about the flight of businesses leaving downtown and going out to uh, outside in the malls and everything else. And that was the hard thing that, that we're dealing with. And thank, thankfully for the bid district and TIF and all those things that, that, that have done and, and the city is allowed to do, I appreciate uh, backing that and, and making that work because we've seen downtown uh, grow and prosper quite a bit in these last so many years and to the point now where we've kind of uh, come to a little bit of a uh, crossroads uh, in what we're going to do because the more we try to attract businesses and entertainment and uh, uh, residents downtown uh, we're going to have to do something about the parking issue it's just it's just really gotten to be an issue that we can't overlook it may and like Brady said I think we have to take this in steps we can't jump in and say hey, let's put up a parking garage wherever we can find it downtown. Because as we know, that takes revenue, and that's going to be a cost that uh, we probably can't bear right now. But some of these others, finding lots, finding uh, different opportunities, time parking, I think it's just something we have to do. Um, uh, and the lighting and landscaping with people to walk. I've, I've heard a lot of the merchants downtown say, well, it's all fine and good to park two or three blocks, but the lighting's terrible, and I'm afraid to let my employees walk and have to deal with that over that period of time. So I think those are some of the things we have to have to have to take into account. So any steps we can take, I think is going to be a, a positive for us downtown uh, and all the issues we have at Campus Corner too in the Strip. I think it's just critical as we continue to grow and ask and look for people because Block 34 is going to there's going to be more development happening. Um, you know, we don't have a problem really parking where we're at 6th and Main so much. And, and actually, the the, uh, <clears throat> the old Oklahoma Closing Building is going to come down, which we own now. And there will wind up be some parking and how we fit and try to do driving and all that. But there will probably be some there, but it won't be near enough to, to help out in some of those entertainment venues that are going to be brought in. So, uh, And I think the development around Block 34 is going to continue to, to be an issue. We do now, some of our employees rent some spaces from the Tubner Garage. And that is an option uh, that I don't think is utilized because I don't think people have been educated about it. I think you people know where I'm talking about in his garage over there. And I think that's definitely from an entertainment standpoint, even employee standpoint. He said he sold a lot of those, but there's probably only about 30 of them are even used. So anyway, certain things to think about, but I think we are at a crossroads. We've got to do something about parking. So thank you. Thank you, Scott. What's the solution, Brady? I don't. I don't know. I mean, it's. It's. Yeah. I mean, it's. It's complicated. Um, I, you know. I think we need. I think we need more inventory. I mean, right? We need more inventory. The greatest impact right now on inventory and management is the areas surrounding campus when they're in school. No questions. Not a single person on our those com committee would argue with that. Um, as you've heard tonight. Uh, downtown has its own issues, but again, I think as we're seeing growth in new TIF projects, even going through the TIF committee today, there's gonna be a higher demand on parking and, continue, and it will continue to be that. It's a, at the end of the day, it's a good problem to have. Stillwater is growing. People wanna be here. Um, people wanna come to our districts and be a part of them. Um, our city has done a, a, a good job and our enforcement teams have done a good job with the technology that they have and have been given to them. Um, but I think there's new opportunities that we need to look at and explore. Um, I have some maps. I know we, you guys may be ready to, to sum it up tonight. I, I, I have drew some, I, I think it's worth showing just because it's coming to the conversations, but I have them prepped here. But about a year ago, um, Norman, or I actually think, um, Mayor, you, you were emailed by a, a person, a developer downtown that said, hey, we need, a, we need this parking garage, we need it tomorrow, right? And, we, and we, we've talked to these other communities and they've said, um, 
And honestly, they've all said to a point, I even talked to a firm that designs parking garages. That's how they make their living. They said, don't do a parking garage. They're like in, in a community, like they are so much to maintain. Um, when I drove around Lawrence, the guy drove us around to all the parking garages and said, um, all that revenue that I've showed you that we're capturing right now in our new management system all goes to pay the notes on those parking garages. Let me drive you to those real quick. And they were empty. And they were mainly built for game days. Um, when, we, when Steve Spradling came to talk to our group, he shared the same thing. He said, all of our parking revenue for the entire campus, all the parking permits that the students pay, all go to support the notes on the parking garages. And the cost has gone so high that they, I know they had one planned right there north of Eskimo Joe's and, and the Garage Burger in that area by the new Catholic Church. It's just off the tables right now because of the cost. So, um, so when we have that challenge, um, and I'll, I'll share this real quick. Again, uh, in my CAD software, it may not be 100% to scale. I actually will say that, but it's close. You know, these orange areas are areas where we have the ability to make right-of-way parking spots. As new development comes in or as um, we work with those area owners to just, but this is again in our right-of-way that butts up to their property, but this, there's a significant amount of parking spots that we can look to create. There's a parking lot um, south of Sherrar that we, we had conversations to see if we could make it a parking lot um, and the church could use it on Sundays. Um, there, there are opportunities uh, on these notes here, you know, a 400, park, park, a 400 spot parking garage at Bank First, about 9.2 million. Again, that was December of 21. I think that cost has gone up. That's 23,000 per spot. Um, you know, there is a way that I, I drew 344 new spots. We worked with Bank First, which we appreciate their community support. They've, they uh, changed their signs. We worked with them to change their signs. So now the Bank First lot that has 56 spots is free to the public after eight to five on Monday through Friday, which is great, We're grateful for that. Um, and then I'll show you the strip area in that area that Claudia and Dustin were talking about around the McKnight Center on the blocks outside the strip. So my mouse here, you can't see it. There's Washington, but the, there's kind of a cross there of orange parking spots. Again, areas of opportunity for right-of-way to create more right-of-way parking. It, but it just takes what, funds. It takes Where costs. is that cross? What are those streets? That is Jefferson and uh, Fourth. then along that long strip of, is that Ramsey? Help me out folks. Yes, Ramsey there next to the McKnight Center is mm -hmm. a long stretch where we have the opportunity to create a lot of right-of-way parking. Yeah. So um, again, next steps, I think we, if, if it's councils, you know, kind of would agree on this, I think as city management, we can, um, look at talking to a professional and expert in the industry and help us with implementation. I feel like we've done the study, right? And uh, Vice Mayor Jalowski at our, in our August meeting said, I think there's some good data there that we need to lean on. And you're right. I mean, I read from our 2005 plan that said, this is what we're recommending. And we're kind of recommending the exact same thing today. So um, it's, you know, it's time to implement it. So 17 or 18 more years, we should be ready. ready. Yep. <laughs> I think we should just kick it down the road a little longer. I guess that was just one of my questions. So do we feel like, I mean, I agree. I think having a professional, I'm, right, these are really complicated. Just having somebody that's a little more out of, even just out of the system to kind of look at it um, with a fresh set of eyes and that's maybe not so so tied into all the, the politics and things that can come into parking decisions. <laughs> Um, do we feel like we have enough of the data to get them started or do we think that would be a part of their um, process as well is to kind of evaluate, right, this is the inventory we have, these are the needs that we have. I think sometimes it's hard to write that anecdotal information. It mm -hmm. doesn't always match up with the data that we yep. pull together. It's a great question. So last week I spoke to um, someone that, uh, a group that, OSU recommended that I just contact them and just see, you know, in, in this process, are we at the right crossroads of ready to 
uh, initiate an expert in the field to come in and look and and they said yes you've done a lot of the work we would have had to do obviously there's still going to be some study they're going to have to examine some of those counts that of the maps and understand um, the issues you know take this data and the feedback that the findings of the parking committee has collected and say okay these are the areas and, and they all said you have to do it in increments like we we can target areas we can read that data we can then see where the next areas to implement are and and i think the key of all of this is that um, this revenue this it will be significant i mean Can lawrence kansas is seeing significant revenue through their parking system what is what does significant mean i knew you were gonna ask that number <laughs> i looked on my old notes in my ipad right before the meeting and I don't want to be quoted because I don't know exactly what they're, they're relaying in their annual report, but it was um, somewhere around, I don't know, half a million a, a year. So hundreds of thousands rather than tens of thousands. Yes. And, and that's net of the costs of maintaining the systems, or is that? Yeah, that's just the revenue they're creating. And, and they're, like Oklahoma City, putting it back in those districts. And I think that's key. Yeah. Not 100% not of it. Obviously, you need some to support the, the management system, but like Oklahoma City had an article where they were doing, a, I think it was a 60-40 split, but there's some type of dedicated funds that are set aside, um, bookmarked for those districts, and then they they would sit as their boards, which we have boards in each of those districts, mm -hmm. would say this is how we want, they'd work with the city to say this is how we want this implemented, whether it's creating more parking or it's doing those public realm improvements. Mm -hmm. All those things need to be worked out, and that's where we would love to have some kind of expert in that field come do it. I think it'd be interesting to hear, to hear an expert and see, you've talked about um, taking incremental steps. I, there's obviously two distinct issues right now. One is the employee parking, and the other is um, not letting students or others game the system and park at length in in the in the public parking um, but those are I guess a little at at odds I guess because uh, you know if you're trying to find parking for employees then the um, technology apps they're still going to have to pay to park places so have you in talking to other um, communities have you seen how they balance that as far as employee parking, I have not. I haven't. I have not examined um, that aspect. With I was more focused on how they were doing their management system and just how it worked in their community. But no, as far as uh, employee parking, and that that is a struggle, right? Because as we create or try to create more space for uh, customers, you know, that does yeah. we have. It is a factor that's so important, and so it's yeah. it's um, something I know that some of the community members um, some. Some merchants go to quite an extent of taking on that expense for their employees. Some retailers, through these discussions, have said that's the city's responsibility to provide parking for their employees in these areas. So, um, yep, yeah, it's an issue. One of the things I'd like to ask that, to be sure that you're thinking through as you go th continue through this process is I have a number of clients who either it's not just stereotypical because of age either. Just don't use technology, don't like technology, don't have smartphones, don't want smartphones, don't know how to use their smartphones. And that could be a problem trying to park in downtown and places where they go that we might start requiring this. So how are we gonna get around that, whether it's a kiosk or whatever, how are we gonna manage through that? Yeah, so there, there are options um, that we will have to explore with some expert in the field, but basically, um, what I've seen in other communities and even on our own campus uh, here in Stillwater is the options of uh, kiosk pay, um, which I, to me seems more complicated sometimes than just um, the app base where it's a sign at every parking spot that says you can text to pay, you can call to pay, and you can obviously use an app or a QR reader to pay. Um, there's 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 communities that are going straight like us, uh, Starksville, Mississippi, uh, where Mississippi State is, went straight from no parking to completely app-based parking. Like, I'm sorry, no paid parking, just time parking, to app-based parking. And well, uh, app, but uh, their app has physical, mm -hmm. non-app has those, options, all those options. Right? Yeah. yeah, and I think it's uh, as a former retailer that 
I would have to recognize those customers and, and, and say, did you have any issue parking and work with them? Oh, I didn't even notice I needed to pay. You can say, okay, well, let's, I want to walk you through the process. Mm -hmm. There's that's, there's validation codes. There's, there's lots of things that you can work to, to uh, mitigate that. Yeah. I mean, that's my question about some of these systems and I've seen, you know, I was in downtown Tulsa last weekend. They've got park mobile, I think in most of their downtown area. And that's what OSU uses in their lots. Um, and that, Claudia, is what you have in your lot. Um, I mean, I assume that, well, I know you can do different zones and different rates in different zones, and evidently you can do progressive <coughs> rates where it's an hour or a quarter for the first hour and then 20 bucks for the second hour or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. um, would they allow us to, uh, you know, I, so Dustin was talking about the church lot, which I have some experience with. I know they're not doing that anymore because it's so hard to enforce the, the parking, right? If someone parks there, it's not supposed to be there. They got to get a tow truck out, all that kind of stuff. If there's a private lot like that, could we put them in the system as well and do some kind of, you know, if, if there are some of these private lots in these areas that say, hey, I'd, I'd put mine in your, your app, you know, give me 10% of the 20% or 75% of the profit or whatever it is. I mean, is that sort of thing, is there that much flexibility in these systems that we could bring some of the private lots into them. We can do different zones and say, and employees, you have this code you can use when you're parking for work. And so well, therefore it gets paid for. Is that? That's something obviously our, our city attorney would have to review uh, as far as us enforcing you're talking, because it's an enforcement issue there at that point, right? I mean, as, as zones, you can, to answer your question, yes, anything is can be a zone. So the UHBC parking lot that Dustin was referring to could be a zone, its own zone. That revenue is separated and then you know accounted for and distributed yeah. but as far as enforcement is yeah. can the city enforce that's a whole nother issue i know osu is open to enforcing our area and they're open to enforcing i'm guessing other people's areas too so that might be an option with osu so those i've always wondered actually how those things work i mean there's somebody that drives around and scans the plates in the in the zone and it just tells them that person didn't pay yeah it's a lifetime database so so you just have one Car yeah, that's you just have one car with circling. two cameras, and um, you can get you can cover an area like we're talking about in our city multiple multiple times an hour. Hmm. So it's it's all live time. And then you, if we decide we have areas that are still timed and chalked, then we could have that too. So there are options. Well, I, I guess my, I mean, I'm I'm all for figuring out. So, you know, these kinds of modern systems, you're, we're seeing much more, I'm seeing them all over the place, right? And not just in downtown Tulsa, but in smaller towns in, in I mean, you're talking about Lawrence and uh, Starkville and those kinds of places, which are pretty analogous to here. Um, so I think, you know, it's a no brainer for us to try to figure out, can we improve some of these problems by bringing something like this in? I think the You've been referring to a parking management program and said both downtown, downtown had it a lower priority, but certainly the Strip uh, and the Campus Corner had it higher. Um, just so we're clear, that means paid parking, right? That all of these spots or the majority of these spots would require people to pay some amount of money to park in spots that are now free. Well, I mean, that's, that's, that is part, if you're going to have license plate res yeah. recognition technology, some communities choose to still have free options. So we could, we could, in theory, tomorrow, slap an app-based, that you're referring to, an app-based uh, brand uh, on all of our districts. The, you could say the first 45 minutes on the strip is free. Yeah. We would, we would bear the transaction fee, the 35 cent transaction fee for that person to check in on their app, still park for free and leave the district. And they, we would, but, and some communities choose to do that. Um, there's a community in Arkansas, Hot Springs, that's looking at implementing this, and they're looking at doing that to still have that first 30 minutes free. Okay. So for pickup, I mean, I used to own a store where we sold water bottles. Every water bottle is in the increased cost of what that is to just park and grab it and go. Yeah. So you could have that option to have 30 minutes free, and then you still get to set those rules where you in downtown could erase the chalk you're not supposed to but they do i've watched them or you <laughs> you move your car two spots over because you know exactly when they come by and so you're abusing that system when you've checked in on an app and say you're only you're going to go eat at hideaway or louis and you've paid for an hour um 
you know, it will give you an alert that says you're having a good conversation. It'll give you an alert and says your, your time is up in 10 minutes and you, you know, you just tap that you need to add a little more time. But if you don't, you know, our readers will read it and immediately know when those are expired in that zone. Yeah. And you can also set rules um, to answer the question that Claudia had, you know, on the strip where, where you want it to make it, you could set a max time. So the strip merchants can work with us and say, this is the max time we feel like someone's going to actually park and come to our business in, the, in these amount of hours. And you just set that max time. So if it's two hours or an hour and a half, and that's the limit. So they can't add more time. Like a student couldn't be in class and add more time. They have to move their car. And they, you can even set rules on that car can't come back in that zone for a certain amount of time. So it, there's, there's all kinds of things that you can do. I mean, so, and, and there's, you know, one thing that kind of shocked me when I saw all this public parking we have around the campus corner and district, or the, the campus corner and the strip areas, on game days, that's 100% free, untimed parking. So, I think one of the important things to remember there too is that while we could receive revenue from that, that would help us support that infrastructure and that resource, it's really not the point of it, right? The point is to help promote turnover or make sure that people aren't taking advantage of those mm -hmm. free spots and um, it's part of that, right? Yeah. Kind of the, the outreach to the community and helping people understand the kind of needs of the businesses and um, folks that are working there. I think that's it's an important point. It's not kind of that's paid correct. parking for the sake of paid parking. It has this kind of bigger um, yep. goal it. in that's mind. Right. That's correct. Yeah, and I, I, I made that point explicit just to make sure that, that <laughs> we all understand that that's sort of what we're talking about, or at least partially what we're talking about. And um, you know, to sort of ask the follow-up question with, you know, all the business owners and stakeholders who have been part of these committee meetings. I mean, I know in the past, one of the, you know, concerns about having paid parking in some of these areas was that business owners didn't want to make their, you know, they, they felt like that would keep people from coming to their businesses if they were being asked to pay to park. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I, I respect that as an opinion. I don't know. I mean, it sounds to me like, as a collective group that there are more people who say having people pay to park might actually improve the situation with with turnover more than there are people saying we don't ever want to ask our our customers to pay i i think downtown i i mean honestly if i'm being honest i think the downtown group will have i i've, I've been shocked by some of the members of the committee that i thought would have some opinions on being against meter parking even though i guess downtown was the first place that ever like we invented like the car meter or the, yeah. the parking meter was installed first so it's kind of funny um but that i i do think there'll be pushback sure. and someone on our committee who's well well outspoken uh said it means you may have to move out of downtown like as downtowns change and evolve like if that doesn't fit your business model you know that may may choose may, may look at some businesses that choose that this is there might be a better part in town that they need to participate in as things evolve um i could see though with with block 34 coming so close into downtown and our hopes of really connecting that space to downtown some of the same things that are happening in the, on the strip and campus corner right with people kind of staying for very long periods of time because there's festivals or whatever happening, events happening at Block 34, that same challenge could present itself downtown pretty quickly as hopefully those things grow and succeed in our community. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, anybody else? I had a thought, and I'm gonna take me a second. It, as you, when we talk about these apps, um, I assume that it's still a Stillwater policeman that would ticket them if they had been parking for too long. Does that increase the number of policemen that need to be devoted to doing that? Or, you know, as opposed to going through and chalking or, or yeah. having free parking? So we, we had a conversation with Roy Stevens, who oversees our current enforcement. And, and he, he understood a lot of the things that I've been observing from other communities and what I'm, and what, you know, are some of the solutions of what the parking committee is wanting, and um, he, you know, he looked and said, "Yeah, we're, we're this might be an additional 
uh, parking attendant, definitely not cutting parking attendants where we would look at having at least one car with the um, LPR camera mm -hmm. technology. I shared some of the numbers of what uh, Lawrence invested in their entire system from the software packages to everything to implement the system in the cars. And he said, oh, that's doable. I mean, it's just, I mean, right. I mean, it's, it's all, we, we, I don't want to say that there's just excess revenue. It's just, we would find a way to, to implement um, the staffing that we need or currently and use all of our current staffing. Mm -hmm. But you're talking about one car that could go through our districts multiple times an hour. I just had one last comment yep. I wanted to make. I was, I understand the, the financial impact of trying to do a parking garage. I was really uh, appreciative of some of the conversation you had about finding right of way parking. I think something that I see a lot in my work and as I'm in kind of downtown spaces and districts, um, surface parking lots can really destroy the vibrancy of those spaces so I think right that's why parking garages kind of came about and they surface lots and kind of be their own kind of sort of blight especially when they're um, when there's a bunch of them right near these really um, busy areas so mm -hmm. I love the idea of, of right of way obviously you can't avoid surface lots entirely but finding ways to kind of maybe have redundancy or kind of um, use them in multiple ways at, at once or at different times of the day or something I think is really important. I don't think that we would be very happy if we just developed yeah. a bunch of surface lots. Yeah, no, I, I would agree. If we, could, if we could get a free parking garage, <laughs> If I'd somebody would just one. drop that down, <laughs> yeah. that'd be amazing. Yeah. No, because, I mean, to share experience, Bobby and I and Crystal, and we talked, we dreamed about on 7th Avenue, for years like shutting it off and just making a pedestrian way in between the alley and husband and just having that great courtyard to grab your aspen coffee and come sit and whether it's a fountain or park your bikes and but that 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 kind of creativity and some of those things that we love when we when we visit a town like boulder colorado and see those things and we're like man this is cool wish we could have that it takes those parking structures that gives you the freedom to be more creative in your right away i i agree Further comments? Uh, I will just add at the end here um, uh, just our collective thanks to all of uh, all of you uh, stakeholders who have participated in the process uh, this point. I know we've kind of all said that at some point, but um, there's a there's a lot of great comments. What you what you put in the packet, um, some of these emails and, and different comments that folks submitted. I mean, there's a lot of um, I, <laughs> it's not really extra time and effort because this is what you guys deal with every day right these are the problems that you deal with in your businesses and in, in your places of work and all that sort of thing and uh, i i do appreciate you taking the time to sort of lay it out in ways that that help us understand what those problems are and try to help us figure out what solutions might be viable um, so it, it is very valuable that you participated <laughs> and are participating in these conversations um, and, and it's our job now to to actually honor that participation by doing something about it. Um, and so, you know, I, I think there's a lot of the comment that, that that no, there's no free parking, right? None of this is free parking. Uh, it, there's always an investment that's being made here. Um, and, and we need to be good stewards of, of, of that public investment. Um, I certainly think from a council perspective to, you know, guidance, there certainly seems to be plenty of um, interest in the idea of looking at one of these sort of modern parking monitoring systems figuring out how can we make better use of the spots that are already there make sure they're being turned over seeing how many additional right-of-way spots you know we might be able to bring into a system like that i would love to us for us to figure out if we can do some of that public private stuff where there are there are private lots that are not being utilized as well as they could be and if we could somehow draw them into this and make them part of our our collective inventory um, I think there is enough um, stuff on the fringes that we're just not using well right now that we could make a lot of improvement just by the efficiency before we have to start saying, well, let's tear down stuff and start building new parking. Um, not to say that's not something we're going to have to do in the future, but there's a lot of efficiency we could gain here with, with what you're suggesting. So um, we'll be back, what, next month and tell us how that's all going to work? Is that sure. <laughs>
mm-hmm. <laughs> sometime in the in the near future hopefully yep yep further comments anything from staff want to add at this point yep i've got a couple of a couple of quick announcements I uh, just want to make due to the potential of inclement weather over the next couple of days. We do have some closings that will affect members of our community. The Stillwater Senior Center will be closed tomorrow, Tuesday, January 31st, as well as, which already have announced, Stillwater Public Schools, Meridian Technology Center, and Oklahoma State University will be closed. Uh, please remember, if you're utilizing the Stillwater Regional Airport, keep an eye on your flight status through American Airlines. That can be checked online at aa.com. The League of Women Voters have rescheduled their city council candidate forum, which was supposed to be tomorrow night, uh, until Thursday, February 2nd at 7 p.m. right here in this room. Uh, you can watch the forum live on our YouTube channel, our municipal TV channels on Suddenlink 14 and AT&T Uverse 99, and the City of Stillwater Facebook page. And with that, we'd ask that you all travel home safely um, and stay warm and safe over the next couple of days. Hopefully we won't get... Uh, anything too bad come through here so is there a motion to adjourn second we have a motion and a second to adjourn the city council please vote with a vote of four to zero we're now adjourned thank you All right.